The Make Human in the Loop integration is designed to incorporate human oversight into automated workflows, especially workflows involving an AI agent or AI generated content. This feature allows users to pause an automated process or workflow at specific points and enable human review and approval before that process proceeds. Well, this sounds great, and you're like, how do I get access to this module? It's only available to make enterprise customers. But don't leave yet. In this video, I'm going to show you a way of doing human in the loop that I've been using for five years, long before this module came about with Make. But first, if we haven't met yet, my name is Andy O'Neill and I help entrepreneurs add time saving automation to their business. I do this by offering personalized one on one co building calls and through my community, the Co Build Collective. So it turns out human in the loop is actually a recognized programming term. But since I'm not a programmer, I've always called the concept an automation sandwich. So what is an automation sandwich? An automation sandwich starts with a triggering automation, something that happens that ultimately requires human intervention. Next, there is a human in the middle that provides input or feedback, and then the second automation finishes the workflow. And I'm going to show you how this is easily accomplished using two make scenarios, along with a notification system like email, SMS, or Slack, and an online form that allows the use of URL parameters to pre-fill data. If you need help on this scenario or any others you build, feel free to reach out to me at this link and book a call. So let me do a quick overview of what this scenario does. I'm watching new comments on my YouTube channel and I'm analyzing the sentiment of those using make AI tools and I'm also making a request. If you want to see my make AI tools playlist, check out this link right here and you can see all my videos on the make AI tools. I am sending a message to myself on Slack and I am adding a little trickery, which is pretty cool. I think where I'm adding in the ability to do a thumbs up once this comment has been replied to. So I know in my Slack channel, the link that has the thumbs up has already been taken care of and responded to. That link in my Slack channel takes me to a form where I'm able to see the original comment and the AI response. And when I submit that form, this is scenario number two that will send the reply to YouTube and mark that Slack message with a thumbs up so I know that it's been taken care of. So let's dive into these scenarios and the form and see exactly how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and choose where to start on my YouTube comments. I don't know that I have any new ones, so I'm just going to pick where I want to start here. And let's go right here and hit save. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And I'm going to show you what happens over here in Slack. Now you can see here is a previous message it says a new YouTube reply has been received straight to the point and clear. Thanks. And then I have a link here where I can reply to that person who made the comment. So let's run this scenario again and we'll watch for that item to be added to Slack. So I'm going to hit run here. All right. So that's running. We're going to watch for a new message here on Slack and there it is. So today and you can see the new message. Wow. I did not know that. Thanks. So let's take a look at this link and the form it goes to. So I have the original con comment right here and I have the generated reply from my AI modules in make. Now, if I go up here and look at the URL, I'm going to paste that into notepad so you can see it. So right here, I have a parameter. This is a question mark comment equals, and that has the original comment. And then I have another parameter here, which is an ampersand reply equals, and that's the reply that the AI generated over here in this scenario. So here's my reply, suggested reply. Thank you for your comment, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm having the chance to edit that reply before I submit it back to YouTube to reply to this comment. And so the way this works is I have my form set up to where it's pulling this parameter. It's pulling the original comment parameter right here into the form so I can view that. And then I'm seeing the reply. And this is actually 
text I can edit, you can see here, in that form. So I can edit it, then I can hit submit, and that'll run my second automation. So this is the this is the human in the loop or the the person in the middle of the automation sandwich. This is the chance where you get to give human input. I am not comfortable just auto replying with AI to comments on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just not how I'm going to operate the YouTube channel. So I want to see these. This is a great way to get an idea of how to reply, but I want to see them before I reply so I can make some edits. Maybe I need to add some technical information or remove some technical information that the AI generates based on the comment. Now I'm using Ninja Forms with WordPress. This will work with other form packages. I know it'll work with Gravity Forms with WordPress. It'll work with Type Forms, which is a standalone system. It should work with Cognito Forms, Wufu Forms. The, the ability to fill in text into fields on a form from a URL. That's possible with several form packages, but maybe not necessarily all of them. So what I've got right here is this is my, this is just an HTML and you can see here's my original comment and I have query string comment. Now where that comes from in Ninja Forms is right over here. If I go down to other, I can click on query string and that's going to bring the query string or the parameters down into my form. Click off of that and doing the same thing here. So here's my reply. This is the uh, field I can reply in and then I have two hidden fields and one of those is the comment ID so I'm using the query string ID and if I look back over here at my URL somewhere I have not right there it is ID equals and that's the ID of that comment and then here's a timestamp and that is from Slack, which gives me the ability to thumbs up that comment when I've taken care of it in my scenario, when I've responded to it. And I've never actually done this before. I was like, hey, I wonder if I can update a message. So I'm watching for comments here. I have the analyze sentiment. So this is simply just a module. You throw the text in and you say, return the sentiment. Uh, and I'm making a request here. I have a, a prompt that asks for the AI to create a response to the comment based on the sentiment and based on the text that was submitted. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm saying don't include any contractions in the reply. I'm doing that for two reasons. The first is people who speak English as a second or third language often struggle with contractions and what they mean. And the second reason is contractions can mess up the URL and can mess up the response when it comes through. So kind of a practical and uh, readability reasons that I'm just saying don't don't have any contractions in the reply. And it just makes it so that it's a little bit more universally read. So that's my prompt for that. And then I'm creating a Slack message. So right here, I'm starting the message. I have this, a new YouTube reply has been received. Okay, I'm putting that right there, but I'm not putting the link yet. So you can see right here, a new YouTube reply has been received. The star around that text makes it bold and the underscore around the, te the display text or the comment text makes it italics. So you can see this part here is bold. The comment is italic. Now, the reason I'm doing an update to the message is because I need the timestamp of this message included in my URL parameters. And I'm not able to do that when I send the message because the timestamp hasn't been created yet. So I'm creating the timestamp here and then I'm doing an update on this message and I'm adding that URL. So here is my, this is how you format the URL. This part of it I added actually in the first message. Here is the URL. So you put the URL in carrots, you do a pipe, and then you put your text. And so right here is the timestamp from when I created the message. So I'm creating the message. I don't have the timestamp yet. Then I'm updating the message. I'm grabbing the timestamp from module eight where I created it, and I'm adding that to my URL. So now I can do a thumbs up on the message 
when the uh, when the scenario runs, I can thumbs up that message because I have the timestamp of the original message. So when I get this message, I know the link is here. I can click right there and that will take me over to my form and that will pre-fill all of the items. And I can simply edit this message and hit submit. So let's go over to the second scenario uh, where I submit that. Now I have YouTube turned off since I'm testing um, just for the sake of not sending replies to comments right now. So I've, I've created a webhook here and that webhook is over there in my form. So if I go over here to emails and actions right here, I'm using the Zapier add-on for Ninja forms. Uh, I, if you're using another form type, you'd want to use the webhook. Uh, but in with Ninja Forms, the Zapier one works better than the webhook. So that's how that is set up. And we're going to go back over here to our second scenario. And we're going to run once. I'm going to go back to my form and I'm going to submit my form. And we'll watch this scenario run here. So we got our data. So here is the reply that I'm going to use to send to YouTube. Uh, here is my comment ID, which YouTube requires. So if I go over here, I've got my comment ID here, and I've got my content, my generated reply from my form uh, that I proved as the human in the loop. And then over here, I have I've done a, a direct message to, to Andy O'Neill. So I am I am adding a reaction to a message. So I got I have that timestamp from the original message where I sent that. And then I'm adding a thumbs up and you, there's other emojis you can put in here, but the thumbs up is uh, yeah, it made sense for what I was doing here. I'm going to submit the form again and just come over here and you can see the thumbs up popped up. I uh, almost got there before I did, but that's so cool to see. And it just kind of gives you a, uh, you know, you could put a check mark there or whatever. It lets you know you've replied to this and, and it's, it's good to go. So I love adding that reaction there because uh, I know I'm done. I don't have to do anything to that particular comment anymore. So that's the human in the loop or my term, the automation sandwich. You start with a triggering scenario. You take it over to a form that allows you to pre-fill information to where you can easily give input, approve, whatever, and then submit that form and then it goes over to a second scenario that finishes your workflow. And from that first scenario, you have a notification that comes to you via Slack or text or email so that you know there's an action to be taken. I hope you have enjoyed this video talking about human in the loop. Again, this is basically what that enterprise module does, except it does it within Make. And here we're going out to a form on your website or a form package that you might have that you can use. And it's just a way to insert yourself in the middle of a workflow so you can approve. And it doesn't have to be AI generated content. Uh, I've used this for podcasts where we have a producer that creates a podcast, drops it into an FTP folder. We go to a form, we give it a title and description, submit it, and then it gets sent off to the podcasting platform where it's posted. So there's a lot of use cases for this and it's really handy when you need a human in the loop to review your workflow before it finishes. I appreciate you watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below. Do you like human in the loop or do you like automation sandwich better as a term for this? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.